Hello and welcome to Union Solidarity International. My name is Walton Pantland and I'm with Andrew Brady and we're going to give you our update of weekly news stories. Uh, well firstly Andrew, uh, we've been to trade union conferences this week, would you like to give us some updates on, on how that's gone? Of course Walton, on Monday we had a fringe meeting at United Union's policy conference which went fantastically well. We had up to a hundred people in attendance, which was very pleasing to see for the first time we've ever had a fringe meeting at a conference, which shows the enthusiasm for the project. And I think the need for a project such as Union Solidarity International. And we had a number of speakers, uh, which of course you can find out more on our website about, because we've actually put the, the audio of that actual meeting where you're able to listen to people in bite sizes mm -hmm. and we had a comrade over from the Athens Labour Centre, Nagia Nicolau, and she gave a, as you would expect, a very heart-wrenching actually mm -hmm. a story about what is the social conditions for people in Athens and in Greece, but also a very sharp political analysis of what was going on in Greece at the moment. And of course we had Jimmy Kelly, the Irish Secretary of Unite, who also gave a, a brilliant analysis in, in the quote of the day, I think as we described mm. it, unions don't need uh, sympathy, what they need is support and solidarity. And he gave an excellent analysis of the situation in Ireland as a result of the bailout, and that Ireland isn't the good patient of the EU authorities because the, the pain that is actually mm. being unleashed uh, and the Irish people is not dissimilar, of course, to other countries across Europe. We also had Tony Burke, the Assistant General Secretary, giving us his analysis of the Eurozone and the wider problems in the European economy and the need to unite and how USI was a critical part of that. And also the, the exciting development of industry. Also, it was a fantastic meeting chaired by the chair of the International Committee of Unite, Mark Lyon, which we were delighted he was able to do for us and it went fantastically well. I hear you've also been on holiday to uh, Sunny Torquay, is that right? Sunny Torquay, we were invited to participate in the RMT's conference uh, to address the young members and uh, that went really well, uh, real enthusiasm for the project. You know. We don't want to exclusively try and connect with young people, but mm -hmm. we also recognise that in terms of the the density of trade union members in the age bracket of up to the 24 isn't where it should be. Mm -hmm. And we hope that initiatives like USI make trade unions and projects supported by trade unions more engaging, more interesting and more in their level. Mm -hmm. So it went, it went really well and as you say, Torquay is a wonderful place. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear it, Andrew. Um, I thought we'd go over some of the, the labour news from the past week, certainly uh, some of the things that have caught our eye. And the first is the uh, firefighters action in New South Wales, Australia. It's one of the most inspiring actions that I've seen for a long time. There's a YouTube video that we've had on our website of uh, firefighters firstly using their fire trucks to block the streets of the city and then their hoses to hose down the politicians who are attacking their workers' compensation. And I thought that was one of the most um, uh, powerful images and powerful actions I'd seen in a long time. It was certainly very inspiring. Um, in Egypt, there is still trouble for trade unions who are trying to organize. Uh, people who followed the Arab Spring and know something of the history of the movement will know that a lot of the first signs of unrest in Egypt came not from the student movement but from the labor movement, um, particularly the textile workers at the Mahala mm -hmm. factory in the Nile Delta who have been taking uh, increasingly dedicated and committed industrial action since about 2006 and there were a number of very big strikes 2007, 2008 and, and a huge amount of, of labor unrest and um, one of the reasons for that is that in Egypt under Mubarak all unions had to be controlled by the state and were centralized and as a result Egypt was blacklisted by the ILO for refusing to uh, enforce ILO conventions on the right to organize and as part of the revolution in Egypt unions were trying very hard to get the right to set up their own free trade unions and uh, unfortunately, we've seen that the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces in Egypt has once again failed 
to to ratify a new law in Egypt uh, called the, the Trade Union Liberties Law, which is supposed to give trade unions the right to organize. And with the, the recent elections, which gave something of an unclear result, because although the um, Islamic Brotherhood candidate won, it seems that the the, the army generals have managed to control a huge amount of the, of the country. So still a very difficult time for our comrades in, in Egypt and certainly a situation that I think uh, we'll be watching closely and looking for ways to, to support. Also in Spain, of course, uh, we have the Spanish miners who are um, resisting a tremendous attack on their whole industry and also on the community as workers Absolutely. in the UK from mining communities will know. Uh, essentially, there's been a 63% cut in coal subsidies, which will completely decimate the mining community. And uh, these miners have embarked on a 284-mile march called the, the Marcha Negra uh, to Madrid to protest against this. So we would just like, uh, as USI, to express our solidarity with those Spanish sure. miners and to say that uh, we're, we're doing what we can to raise awareness and to raise support for, for your struggle. Um, and then just also of interest, it's something which we like to keep an eye on is uh, China, as we know, is considered the workshop of the world. And China is another country which, like Egypt, doesn't have free trade unions. They're largely controlled by the state as well. And yet there has been growing labor unrest in, in China. Uh, we particularly see cases around Foxconn, the big company that makes the iPhones and other tablet computers. Um, and there have been riots recently in the industrial area of Guangdong between uh, migrant workers and police over, over conditions. So I think it's just worth being aware that although not all of this stuff makes it into the mainstream media, there's definitely a lot of um, unrest in the labor situation in China and uh, our Chinese brothers mm -hmm. and sisters are trying hard to organize and to, to raise their terms and conditions and where we can, I think we need to support them. Yeah, absolutely. And a very interesting point in Paul Mason's book, Why Is It Kicking Off Everywhere? That and his analysis is someone who keeps a close eye on contemporary but also historical labour movement mm -hmm. issues. He foresees that China is going to be one of the next big battlegrounds for trade unions in terms of being able to organise. Because, of course, the Chinese econ economy is cooling off somewhat, mm -hmm. still at growth rates of 7 and 8%. Mm -hmm. However, wages, of course, have been suppressed as a result of that predominantly because of migrant labour coming in for the countryside. Mm -hmm. But now there's a greater pressure eh, for wage wages to rise, which many people would view as, as China losing some of its economic advantage, as, mm -hmm. as the authorities would have you see it. I don't see there's any disadvantage in paying workers well, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's an absolutely... It's absolutely critical for our movement to watch closely what's going on in China because as the economy continues to grow, there will be greater pressure for trade unions to independently organise, of course, as well, mm -hmm. uh, as well as those that are, you know, related to the state. Mm -hmm. Just to remind people of some of the campaigns we're running currently, we're working with Prayas Labour Centre in India to support the organising of brick kiln workers, and that project is just about to, to get underway. Um, we've been doing some preliminary research. Prias has certainly done a lot of background work, and when the new brick kiln season starts, uh, I think that organising campaign is going to launch in a big way. So we're looking for trade unionists to support that. We also have the domestic workers campaign. We're trying to raise the profile of domestic work around the world, not just in the UK, and we're using ILO Convention 189 on the rights of domestic workers to do that. As we have mentioned before, the UK is one of only eight countries in the world that has refused to ratify that convention. We would like to pressure the UK government to ratify it. And of course, uh, we're still supporting our comrades in Greece who are facing an absolute crisis and uh, we'll keep you updated with the latest news from Greece and we look forward to your continued support for that campaign. Andrew, any updates on USI as an organisation and where you think it's going? Yeah, Walton, I'd, I'd like to just pick up and you know, all three of the campaigns uh, because I feel as if there's some exciting developments there. We have an association with Preyas, the organisation who we're working with to organise brick kiln workers, have been able to produce a fantastic video, a brilliant video which is done in, in English subtitles as well, which allows trade union members and progressives to to get a real feel for the conditions of the ground on the ground for people. 
and illustrates the importance of why we're involved in this in this project. In terms of domestic workers, you're absolutely right. This is about how we can help amplify the message of the domestic workers networks that are across the world, the Justice for Domestic Workers who are based in the UK. How can we help them to elevate and amplify their very important campaign? And we're delighted that we've been contacted by domestic workers across the world who are wanting to do live link-ups mm -hmm. with us. In the same way that we had with Yanis Varoufakis, which I think would be really exciting to be able to connect domestic workers in a conversation around the world with the technology that we have with Absolutely. USI. And in relation to Greece, our campaign goes from strength to strength. Of course, we had uh, the Athens Labour Centre visiting us. And what we hope to do in the very near future is to get more support for the, the steelworks uh, out just outside Athens who have been on strike now for coming on 240 days. Mm -hmm. And what we can do to help give them some material support on the ground and that's something that we are going to pursue as part of our solidarity campaign with Greece. And also, what I think is a potentially really important part of what USI is going to be doing is that how can we work with our comrades in Greece to potentially have branch 20 mm -hmm. with UK and Irish trade unions that we're able to facilitate mm -hmm. uh, through USI Live and how we can help them be in contact on a regular basis, perhaps through webinars or whatever the format may be. We want to help break down mm -hmm. those borders and that I think would be invaluable to our movement, a real gestures of solidarity. And the last thing I would like to just highlight, which is going to be absolutely critical uh, to USI, is how we engage with rank and file members, union branches. And we will be launching in the very near future, formally, our branch affiliation strategy. So if union branches want to help support the work of USI to help empower trade unions and their members on the ground in areas across the world, then we want union branches to be participating. And in return for that, we want to help union branches develop any campaigns that they want, perhaps around social media and communications that if we're in a position to help, then we would love to be able to do that because you know, I, I very much see USI as being a, a service for trade union members and progressives and how we can build union capacity and empower workers to campaign effectively using social media. Not as a replacement for organising on the ground, but as a complementary strategy to it. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your support and for your interest. Uh, I'd like to encourage you to keep checking the website and uh, to follow us on the social media streams. We have a number of them. We're on Facebook and Twitter. Google Plus, YouTube, we're also on Snippet and Pinterest and they're growing by the day as we learn about uh, new, new social media that we need to colonize and bring the union message to. Um, so yeah, please uh, stay involved. If you'd like to be more involved, we'd love to hear from you. If you have some ideas that we can take forward, we'd love to hear that as well. Um, encourage your branch to affiliate to USI and if you're interested in a, a branch twinning arrangement, speak to us about that as well and we, we will look for a branch that you can twin with in another country and, and perhaps work together on uh, some kind of project. Absolutely. Thank you very much from USI. Thank you.